Hey everyone, it's Kenji. I'm at home and I'm going to be making some French bread pizza. So actually garlic bread pizza is more like it. Um, so this is based on a recipe I wrote for Serious Eats like, I don't know, 10 years ago. Um, I'll link to it. Um, so we want to start with a piece of French bread. And this is just like your, you know, generic supermarket French bread. It's not like a fancy baguette. Although, I mean, you could do it on a, on a baguette, I suppose. But really what you want is that kind of fluffy, crusty... Uh, supermarket style French bread that you know the, the type of bread you would never actually find in France so one of the tricks I found here is that normally when you make French bread pizza you take your bread you put sauce on it you put cheese and you bake it that works fine um, I find that it ends up making the bread a little bit soggy so what I like to do is take it put it on a tray like this um, put another tray on top and then press it down with some amount of weight if you're small you might even put your full weight on there you want to compress it down till it's about two-thirds of its original height all right like that and then what we're going to do is we're going to essentially make garlic bread so i'm going to start by taking a few cloves of garlic um i i made this this for uh pizza night friday night is pizza night at our house um, and we always do well not always but we frequently do different styles of pizza and last night it was um french bread pizza and i posted it on my instagram and people were like oh make a video so um, I had all the ingredients left over, so I'm making it again, and we're going to have it for lunch again. Um, my daughter likes a ton of garlic, uh, mainly because she likes to make people smell her breath after. So, garlic, we're going to smash it. Let me get a skillet going here. So we're going to heat up a little bit of butter, a couple tablespoons of butter, and a couple tablespoons of oil, olive oil, extra virgin. Now this is exactly how I would make garlic bread if I were making garlic bread. Um, and in fact, we are gonna start with garlic bread and then we're gonna transform that into pizza. We don't even really have to let that melt. I'm just gonna go in with a pinch of oregano, dried oregano, little pinch of red pepper flakes, more or less depending on how hot you like it. And then this garlic, after smashing it, Quick chop. I love these Chinese cleavers for doing garlic like this. That extra weight and the size makes it really easy to smash them. All right. And that garlic's gonna go in here. And now we're just gonna let this cook a little bit. We don't want the garlic to brown or anything. Um, we definitely don't want those butter solids to brown, or at least I don't, I mean, but I just want the raw garlic edge to be sort of tamed a little bit and for the garlic flavor and that oregano and red pepper flavor to get infused into the fat. So just a light sizzle is all you need. Um, of course, you know, if you want it, if you want that sort of sweeter brown garlic flavor, go for it. Um, um, if I were making garlic bread, I would be very careful about that because um, by the time you finish completely toasting your bread, uh, the garlic could end up burning. But in this case, we're going to cover it with a little layer of cheese. So even if you get it nice and golden brown, there's no real risk of it burning at all. So go for it however you'd like. All right. That's about it. Now I'm gonna take my bread and I'm gonna use half of this mixture. Not all of it, but about half of it. And I'm gonna spread it on the two bread halves. Um, and again, if I were going, if I were, if I were making like full, full on garlic bread, I would use all this mixture and I would spread it really, you know, I'd be very careful, careful to get it over every surface here. Um, but in this case, you don't have to be that precise, just like that is fine. Now, I'm gonna add tomatoes to that infused garlic oil mixture. Um, this is actually, I, I had a can of Rayo's tomato sauce that was half open, and that was open and half empty in the fridge, so that's what I'm using here. Um, but the recipe calls for just regular old canned crushed tomatoes. Um, or you can use uh, whole peeled tomatoes and crush them yourself. 
um, and that's totally fine. Also, you, you can, you know, basically any any kind of sauce or crushed tomato product will work here. Whatever whatever sounds good on your pizza is going to work. And we'll just let that simmer a bit. So while that cooks down, I'm going to start with a little cheese. So this is the other secret, little protective cheese layer so that the sauce doesn't completely soak into the bread. So initial cheese layer here. This is, um, I'm using a combination of uh, mozzarella and Monterey Jack because um, I find that if you can't find, full, if, if I had found just plain old full fat mozzarella, I would have used that. Um, but low fat, you know, skim, meth, skim, part skim or all skim mozzarella doesn't melt too nicely. So I, when I can only find part skim, I like to mix it with some Monterey Jack, which melts really well. So that's what I got here. Um, and, and for this type of pizza, you can also feel free to use um, pre-shredded cheese. You know, um, pre-shredded cheese, it has cellulose added to it so that it doesn't like anti-caking agents. Usually potato starch or cellulose, um, and that can affect the way it melts, so it's not ideal. But for this kind of like super simple dish, French bread pizza, you know, who cares if it's perfect. All right, so that's gonna go in the oven for about five minutes. Um, the sauce is gonna simmer down for about five minutes, and so I will see you back again after that cheese has been melted. All right, so I think that's been about five minutes. I know someone's gonna like look at the timestamp on the oven and tell me uh, whether it was really five minutes or not, but it's all right. It's around five minutes is what matters. All right, so we got our sauces ready. Our cheese has been lightly melted. Sauce is gonna go on top of the cheese. Oh, by the way, that oven was at 425. I have it on with convection, which helps uh, with even browning and helps melt that cheese a little faster. Um, but it'll work fine in an, even without convection on. Um, and also this will work fine in a toaster oven. Oh, and I'm, I'm sure someone's gonna ask me about this as well in the comments, but um, you saw I used, I used pre-peeled garlic from a jar. Um, there are some cases where I would use fresh garlic. Um, you know, if, if the garlic wasn't being cooked into a sauce like this, I would have used fresh garlic. Um, somewhere, somewhere where the garlic is really gonna be sort of the primary flavor, I would use fresh garlic because it just tastes better. Um, Pre-peeled garlic has been blanched in order to remove the, uh, the skins more easily, so it doesn't have quite as much flavor as fresh garlic. Um, the only thing I would never use personally is pre-chopped garlic because garlic, once it's been chopped, um, so garlic cells and onion cells, all alliums actually, they have um, these precursor chemicals in them that don't combine until after you chop, uh, after you chop them open, and they combine and turn into the um, into the sort of, well, in, gar in the case of garlic, it's allicin. It turns into a um, what gives garlic its pungency um, and its and its aroma. Um, with onions, it gives you the it turns into those chemicals called lacrimators, which are what make you um, sort of tear up when you're cu cutting onions. Um, once those garlic cells have been ruptured, uh, that stuff is going to form and then it's going to start to dissipate. Um, which means that pre-chopped garlic never has much actual garlic flavor. Um, so I tend to avoid pre-chopped pre -chop garlic. I know a lot of people use it for convenience. Um, and if you've used it in the past and you like it um, and you find it convenient, then I'm not, you know, who am I to tell you not to do it? Um, it's just something I personally avoid, but you can feel free to do whatever you want. All right, cheese on, and I'm gonna finish it off. One of these I'll do plain pepperoni, because that's what, my daughter and my wife will like, I'm sure. Um, and the other one I'm gonna do with my favorite topping combo, which is pepperoni and pickled peppers. I got pickled jalapenos here. You could do pickled banana peppers, whatever. Um, oh, these are these mini, these are <laughs> Hormel mini pepperonis. Um, I like them because they they cup. Um, you know, cuppy, cuppy pepperoni has become like a, sort of a thing now, right? Um, I remember when I, when I was at Serious Eats um, and we used to write about pizza, um, one of our readers submitted a, a cuppy pepperoni haiku. Um, this was like a decade ago. And back then it was much harder to find cupping pepperoni. Um, but I love cupping pepperoni so much that I did. I actually did a long article about what makes pepperoni cu um, curl and cup up. Um, and it's actually much more interesting than I thought it would be. Um, the answer is not obvious. Um, I'll, I'll link to the article. But it turns out the real reason why pepperoni cups um, has to do with the way they are stuffed. Um, so with non, with casings that are not very stretchy, um, so typically that means natural casings um, made, made from intestines, ca um, casings that are not very tasty, when the diameter 
of the stuffing machine is much narrower than the than the casing and what ends up happening is you can kind of got this u-shaped um pattern of um densities within the within the casing so the very center of the pepperoni is actually more dense than the um than the layers on the outside um and and this pattern you can actually you know if you take a naturally a natural casing pepperoni stick cut it in half lengthwise you can actually see the pattern um where where the um the filling started to get stuck on the sides of the wall and then it continues to get pushed down the middle and so it builds in this kind of shape so that when you then cook it um that shape gets exaggerated and that's what makes the pepperoni cup um, it has nothing to do well very little to do with the thickness um not much to do with the temperature gradient in it etc cetera, etc cetera, but um uh, yeah, I'll link to the article. It's way more interesting than you think. All right, pepperoni, jalapeno, cheese, back in the oven. This is gonna go in there for another about seven or eight minutes. Um, so, get in there. All right, I'm, I'm gonna give those like another 30 seconds in there. It's all gonna depend on your oven and on your taste. Um, meanwhile, I got this parsley. Give some parsley a real fine mince. You can use basil if you want. Um, you could use fresh oregano. You could use no herbs at all. I like adding a little bit of parsley to mine. Um, well, I say I like, I also like adding other things too. I'm using parsley because it was in my fridge and I don't have any basil. Um, and then I got some Pecorino Romano. Um, you could use Parmesan. Again, you could use nothing at all. Use the stuff in the green can if you want. All right, let's pop these out. You see how those pepperonis got nice and cuppy there? I love it. My favorites are these little guys that get the little cuppy edges on them, the little crispy edges. All right, pizza. Woo, hot. A nice non soggy garlic bread pizza. Let's finish it off with a sprinkle of parsley. And I'm also going to do a little pecorino. I like to do Parmesan, you know, hard cheeses after the oven. Very light dusting of them just for that little teeny hit of flavor at the end. We can also do a tiny bit more olive oil. Fresh olive oil for flavor. All right. And there we have it. Some delicious French bread pizza. Probably the most complicated French bread pizza recipe you've ever seen. But, you know, if you want greatness, it takes a little work. How's that look to you? That looks pretty good to me. Me. Oh, Hamon, you want a little pepperoni? Here you go, buddy. Hamon, his back leg bothers him, so I don't make him sit all the way. Here you go, bud. All right, everyone. Guys, gals, non-binary pals, I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Uh, stay safe, wear a mask, and um, yeah, see you next time. Bye-bye. Hey everyone, it's Kenji. There are 22 million kids in this country that rely on school lunches for nutritious meals. And with schools closed now more than ever, organizations like No Kid Hungry can use their support. So I'm asking you to join me. Uh, click the link in the description below to donate some money. No amount is too small or too big. Thank you very much and stay safe. Bye-bye.